This is the end of days. This is Wall World. Oh, hello, and welcome back to Titanium Mine. On this episode, we are going to talk about Wall World, a game where you are on a wall. Wall World is a roguelite game, which is a really interesting genre. I think a roguelike has a tendency to get a little bit of bad press, uh, mostly from people like me, uh, because you don't really save any of your progress. You just keep going into a randomized setting, uh, procedurally generated each time, uh, with the hope that you just do better than you did before, but with no real reward for whatever you did. Rogue Lights, on the other hand, take that idea of randomization in your game world, but then also gives you incentives to do things in that world that will help you out in the future, getting you permanent upgrades or more information about the story or the characters or move the plot forward, even if you fail, because you will indeed fail. Uh, and so Wall World does that. And the general idea is that you are in this big spider mech, and the spider mech climbs up and down a wall. At certain points, you will have a mine that is on that wall. There's a little mine point. Just attach yourself on there and go into this little mining area. Some of them are very, very small. Some of them are just a room that has information. Uh, and some of them are incredibly large. And the idea is that you're going to go in there, you're going to chop away at some of the rocks, you're going to get a bunch of these ores, and you can use these ores to now upgrade your spider crawler and give yourself better abilities in your exosuit when you are actually in the mine. Uh, so basically just get better at doing stuff by collecting resources in the game. Now this is complicated slightly by the other big mechanic which is that this is also kind of a tower defense game. It's not just you going in and mining. Periodically, there will be monsters that attack you. And when they attack you, you've got to defend yourself, or at least your spider bot has to defend itself. So you get guns and other abilities that help you defend your spider bot from being destroyed. You fend off a wave and you have a little bit of time before the next wave comes. So you can go back into the mines and try to get as much as you possibly can and then scuttle your little exo mining butt back to your spider robot before it gets destroyed by the, uh, the, the invading force that's coming at you. Periodically to this as well, there's also a larger countdown timer that spawns essentially a boss battle. This big, inky black figure that creates an arena that you can't get out of and does massive strikes on you. And so you have to find a way to get around that. Uh, these are much larger battles, and if you are able to finally succeed, you have a little ways before the next wave comes through. One thing I thought was really interesting were the different biomes. Uh, you don't really know what they're going to be at first, but when you get in there, you start to realize that different places on this roguelike wall that you're on have different colors of bricks and therefore have different kinds of crystals inside of them. And those different crystals are needed so that you can get all of the different kinds of upgrades. Uh, and considering that they're like tech trees, sometimes you need a very specific one before you can unlock any other kinds of upgrades. It can be kind of tricky when you start to realize that you're getting the kind of resource that you need, but for things further down the tech tree and you don't have the thing to unlock so that you can unlock the stuff past it. So then you have to figure out where that is. And this is just a, a little bit of a, a puzzle element to it. Uh, you find secrets as well and blueprints that unlock in the main world so that you can use money that you get and you can uh, buy uh, permanent upgrades to your rig 
Uh, and this will help you out tremendously into the future. Uh, you can even get the ability to do like this deep drilling technique so that your spider robot will burrow deep into the mines immediately. Uh, and so there are some real incentives to explore these larger areas, but there's also this risk-reward, because the further you go into the mines, the further away from your spider robot you are, which means that if you do get attacked, or you spend too much time and the meter keeps going up and you think you're fine, you're probably not. And so before you know it, you're getting attacked, your spider robot gets destroyed before you can even get back there to defend it, and your run is over. So there's a really interesting give and take. When you get to the third main boss battle in this game, you start to realize that there is no hope for you. <laughs> there is really no way to kill the third iteration of this boss. It will do a death beam on you and basically kill you immediately. There's no escaping that. And this wraps into the larger end game, which is that you have to find like these five codexes in the mines. And if you find all five of them, then you can access the big super weapon that will destroy that last iteration, which is essentially how you finish the game. Interestingly enough, though, if you want to keep playing, the game totally allows you to, and you don't have to deal with the boss battles anymore. You can go up and down the wall to your heart's content. And that's kind of neat, too, because it also gives you the opportunity to get all the other unlocks and uh, gives you a little bit more free time in order to actually expand throughout the entirety of the wall from top to bottom, which I actually did do. Uh, it's much easier once you have the upgrades and don't have to worry about the giant ink monster. Uh, so you can go from, from top to bottom in the wall. And I actually, I think, eventually abandoned a session mostly just because I I pretty much done everything on the, on the entire wall. I had gotten everything, so there was no reason to keep playing. The game was actually so engaging, and I got to like it so much, especially when you get enough you know, upgrades that you're just whipping through the mines left and right, that I wanted to try the expansion. So I did get the DLC, which is called Deep Threat, and it's kind of more of the same, although it has some specialty stuff in it so that you get more upgrades that you have, some, some special upgrades and abilities and techniques that you can use in essentially another wall that you have access to now. And uh, it's fine. If you like the game, it's more of that, but with some extra add-ons and also some other uh, special things that you can get in the, in the outer world, which are useful regardless of whether you're playing the, the DLC or the main game. You can use it for either. So some real interesting stuff there just kind of adds to the overall enjoyment of the game. It's a seemingly simple idea for a game. Because you're just in this mech, moving up and down this wall. Pretty straightforward. But the neat thing is, is that it keeps giving you different kinds of things that you do. Uh, I'm moving up and down on the wall. Okay, well now it's a tower defense game, and there are these, these little monsters coming at me. So I've got to defend myself from all the monsters. Okay, well now the monsters are gone. Now I'm going to go into the mine. Now it's like Dig Dug, and now I'm mining through and, and getting stuff. Okay, now I gotta get back to the ship because I gotta defend myself or I gotta get to another mine. And so they keep enough variety going on, but not so many different kinds of things that it keeps you engaged but not lost. And that's really interesting. Uh, and this will keep you engaged for many, many hours if you really gel with its mechanics. And it makes all of those mechanics very easy to understand and upfront immediately. And I think it's an overall uh, really good experience. If you like the idea of rogue lights and you were looking for something interesting that isn't just like a going into a dungeon kind of thing over and over again, you wanted something a little bit different, I think Wall World might actually be a good option for you. Surprisingly uh, fun little game that's not too complex, 
uh, but also has enough complexity that it doesn't feel mundane or bland. It is at this point that I would make you another recommendation. Uh, if you are interested in rogue lights and you are maybe not so happy with the fact that they happen to look very similar to one another, wanted to try something new, uh, Wall World is a good option. But you might also try one that I played just this last year called Gloomgrave. Uh, Gloomgrave is uh, an odd one. <laughs> uh, it is more of a traditional dungeon crawling game. But you and the monsters, everything in the dungeons, really only move when you purposefully move. So it's kind of a turn-based game, uh, and you you move with purpose, like to the right, to the left, and turn and everything. Uh, and so do the monsters, and you get a few upgrades over the course of time if you do really well in those dungeons to upgrade and to unlock new types of of adventures that are going to go into this dungeon. Uh, I, w I would say Wall World is a better overall game, uh, but Gloomgrave is another kind of like roguelite experience that you might find refreshing, considering that a lot of them end up being like, you know, side scrolly, procedurally generated things. This is not that. So you, you might try that too. If you're looking for something a little bit different, that's also roguelite. Well, we don't have a wall world here. We have a cave world. That's right. But the cave has walls. That's why it's a cave. It's like a lot of wall worlds. There's a wall world there. A wall world there. There's a wall world everywhere. You know... You escaped Wall World. Good luck, adventure. Who knows what awaits us beyond the walls? Maybe ceilings. Oh no, ceiling world! <laughs>